God, it is good to be in your house this morning. Thank you for filling this place with praise. Thank you that you have already been in this place before we got here. You go before us and behind us. You hem us in even in this service, Lord. So we lift everything that we are to you this morning. And we worship your name. Thank you for giving us freedom and life to the full so that we can break the shackles off, whatever is holding us back. We worship you with our all this morning in your name. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. It is so good to be here this morning. I'm very excited about this Sunday, and that reason will probably be seen in just a little bit. But um, as we just continue in our worship, would you read with me our call to worship scripture from Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7? Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Oh, 
that you have overcome, that you are in the midst of overcoming things in our life, and that we know that in the end, no matter what, that you will overcome. And so, Lord, right now, we just ask that you plant our feet in that truth, that you are above all things, and that by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony that we will overcome. May this be a safe place where people can share their stories of redemption, of love, of hope. May this be a place where people can find redemption and love and hope and grace. That we are a whole bunch of broken people that you somehow choose to make something of us. And so, Lord, this morning, we thank you for the privilege to just offer that back to you. Offer these broken pieces. And worship you in response of all that you've done in our lives and all that we know that you are going to do. That we're expectant that you're going to do in our lives and in the life of this church. Jesus, we praise you this morning with our all. For from you and through you and to you are all things. To you be the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 As we continue in our worship, our altar care team is gonna come down to the front. And if you're new to this church, every single week we have a time for prayer. And if there's any need in your life, any need for healing or anything going on in your life, this is a safe place. We'll continue worshiping in song together. But these are our altars and please come forward. And also during this time, we love to celebrate um, when the Lord sends us beyond these four walls. And this morning we are celebrating with a dear brother of ours, John Donnelly, um, who has been called to serve as a missionary in Scotland. And so as we continue to worship, um, our deacon Joshua McLeod over here is just gonna be leading a time of prayer for John as we send him out into the world to proclaim um, the name of Jesus. And so let's continue to worship in this time of prayer.
majestic. We thank you, God, that your name is the name that we can call on at all times, God. Your name is, is a strong tower, God. Your name is, is the name that we can say in the midnight hour, God, when it seems like there is no hope for us, God. But your name, all we have to say is Jesus. God, so we call out to you right now, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you that that name is strong, that that name is ours, that that name is good. We love you, God. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. If you are still praying, I just want to let you all know, every week when we have our prayer time, it never ends, and, and we don't need it to ever end. So all throughout the service, you are welcome to come to the altar to continue to pray. That's, that's one of the most important things we do. But it is a good morning to be in God's house. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Well, at this time, children are invited to head upstairs to the children's worship center. They're, they're excited to go, and we will continue to pray that the Lord will, will teach you and strengthen our children as they continue their time of worship and of praise and of teaching. But we thank God for all of our children. We'd like to welcome everyone for being with us this morning. If this is your first time at Christ Church, or maybe your first time in a long time, we especially welcome you and thank you that you are here. There is a connection card in the pew rack in front of you. And if you will grab that card and fill it out, we would love to get to know a little bit about you. And you can drop it in the offering bag when it's passed in a few minutes. Or you can hand it to an usher as you leave the sanctuary. Um, there are also people in the hospitality room to greet you after the service. So we want to meet you. We want to get to know you. We promise we won't bug you. But this is just a way for us to reach out and see if there's any way that we can pray for you or answer any question you have about our church. And each week we welcome those of you who worship with us online. We know that some of you all are across the city and some of you all are across the world. We welcome you into our family. We thank you that you are worshiping with us this morning. Pastor Linda and Pastor Jay are in the room to pray with you, to encourage you, and to make friends with you, to tell you how you can join as a part of this family. Well, we've got several exciting things to tell you about this morning. The first of which is that Pastor Dan sends his greetings again. He, I saw him this week and he said he's been on sabbatical for the last couple of weeks, for those of you all who didn't know, and he said, man, I'm really starting to miss you guys. And so that's a good sign. He was saying that to us. He missed you all already, but some of the staff. Um, so... He will be back in the uh, back in service with us next Sunday preaching, and he is excited. He's energized. He's had some wonderful time with family and friends. So continue to be in prayer for him this final week as he continues to rest and rejuvenate and spend time in God's Word, getting ready to come back. On September 3rd, Wednesday night, we have one of our favorite groups that ever comes through Christ Church, Voice of Joy. And we've heard them so many times. They've come to, to many of our music conferences. They are a choir from Norway, but they sing gospel music. And it's awesome. And they are coming with a couple special guests, David Phelps, who you all know from the Gaither, Gaither series, and also Solveig Leitog. And do I say that right, Christopher? Solveig Lighthog. Lighthog, man. It means lighthouse in awesome. Norwegian, I think. Awesome. Well, we are excited to have them here. They will be with us here for a free concert on Wednesday, September 3rd, right here in the sanctuary. So we pray that's a great time for you to come and to invite your friends and your family as well to hear some great music and come to, a, to, a, to the church. Many of you all who have experienced divorce and separation, we know that that is a very difficult thing and the church wants to provide community and family and life for you. So I wanted to let you know this morning that weekly on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. at the church, we have a divorce care group. And that's a community group for you to come and to find fellowship, to find community as you walk that path. So if you are interested in learning more about that class, which meets weekly, you can call the church offices. And Margaret Wilson is the coordinator of that. And the church will get you in contact with her so that you can figure out how to join in that community. Next Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the month. And every fifth Sunday, we have our widow's might offering. And that is a special time of offering where we give to our benevolence ministry. This ministry is open to the community. It is the ministry where we have people every week 
Tony Bouchard and Scott um, Hale, who work in our offices, they meet with people every week who come in and who need gas, who need a bus ticket, who need food, who need rent assistance, who need light bills paid. Many of you in this congregation, you come as well from time to time when, when times are rough in your family. And so next Sunday, we will be taking a special offering to replenish that bank. Um, all that we collect is given directly for that. So we pray that you'll, you'll pray in preparation for next week in that time. Finally, in, in terms of these first announcements, we have an exciting thing going on tonight at Brentwood Skate Center. We're having our family skate night. And so I know a lot of you all with kids know about that, but I want to tell you everyone is invited. It's going to be a great time. I'll be there. We'll all come to Brentwood Skate Center tonight from 6 to 8. It's $5 for a skater, and uh, it's a really fun time for all ages, so we hope that you'll come out. This is one of our ways to, to finish off the summer as we continue to head into the new school year. I'd also like to thank you all for the feedback that you gave us several weeks ago regarding our Sunday worship schedule. As you know, when we went into this um, a few months ago, we went in looking at this as something for the summer. And as the summer went on, we were listening to all of you all and wanted to hear from a big group of you, which we did on August 3rd, about how you've enjoyed it, how, it's, how it has felt to you. And so we heard from over 600 of you all directly, which was a blessing. And so we thank you for that feedback. We've had a great summer. We have actually grown from where we were this time last year, which is unusual for the summertime and a good signal of what God is doing in our community. And so we wanted to let you know that based on the vast majority of your feedback, we are gonna continue on in this service format with service at 1030 and Sunday school at nine. So we thank you all for being a part of this body. I'm gonna invite Pastor Hardwick is gonna come up right now and he is gonna pray for our offering it's a blessing to have Pastor Hardwick with us. If you don't know Pastor Hardwick, please come up and meet him after the service. He and his wife, Carol, is in the room as well. And Pastor Hardwick is, is our founder. He's our founding pastor. He has been with us for over 60 years. So, Pastor Hardwick, will you lead us in prayer? Do you know when we started? Tell us. I think I do, but I'm afraid we're in front of you to guess. Christ Church started in October of 1949 with eight people who we were on the we were on the corner of Rose and Sadler Street, which doesn't exist anymore. It's under Interstate 440. <laughs> and uh, then we moved up to Alberta Street and we were there about twenty some odd years and moved out here. Started in a basement out here over where the Wallace Chapel is. There was a basement there. Then built the Wallace Chapel and then ultimately this auditorium here. And uh, it was a, a wonderful, wonderful move. About 60 years of, uh, that the Lord al allowed me to be a part of working together with you and many, many more to bless this part of Nashville and through our missions outreach, bless the world. I thank God for that. You bow your heads with me. Lord God, how thankful we are for your blessings to us. And Lord, today as we return back to you a portion of that that you have given to us, I pray that you would just touch the hearts of your people. Let the offering, Lord, be an expression of God of the love of God that we have, that you've implanted in our hearts, first of all to you and then to one another. Bless the people that give, and Lord, if there are those here today that do not have to give, I pray that you would just bless them for the intention they have in their heart. Keep your hand upon Christ's church and let us continue to be a blessing to Nashville, the surrounding area, and to the wide, wide world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, as you give this morning, we have an exciting thing. We've got a family that is going to come sing for us. Jen's family is here with us. Her mother, Sandy, her sister, Allie, and her twin brother, John. She has a twin brother, so we're glad to meet them. And they're going to sing for us. some of 
of these young kids some of those old gospel songs. And they've learned it really well. <laughs> Farther along we We're gonna know all about
know how to continue in the service, think, but will y'all stay standing as we read the scripture together this morning? She Woo, said that she was amazing. <laughs> would you please read with me Genesis 9, 8 through 15? God told Noah and his sons, I hereby confirm my covenant with you and your descendants and with all the animals that were on the boat with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, every living creature on the earth. Yes, I am confirming my covenant with you. Never again will flood waters kill all living creatures. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. Then God said, I am giving you a sign of my covenant with you and with all living creatures for all generations to come. I have placed my rainbow in the clouds. It is the sign of my covenant with you and with all the earth. When I send clouds over the earth, the rainbow will appear in the clouds and I will remember my covenant with you and with all living creatures. Never again will the flood waters destroy all life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please take a moment and greet somebody in the name of the Lord. Any further ado, um, would you please welcome our guest speaker this morning, um, a friend, a mentor, somebody that I admire and look up to deeply, who I learn from every single day and who I also get to call mom. Please welcome Sandy. <laughs> it is an incredible honor to be here. I want to just take a mama moment. And thank you for loving on my girl. She left. <laughs> she left Indiana several years ago, and she knew that she was to come here to Nashville, but she didn't really know the, the why or the what that she would be doing. She just knew the where, and that was Nashville. And you've embraced her, and she has found a home for her heart and her soul and her mind and her spirit. So on behalf of this mother's heart, I just want to thank you so much. And now you get to love on Scott, who is just so very lovable. <laughs> and keep an eye on him for me. I'm just, I'm being real. <laughs> but I'm so grateful. And it was so sweet for when we, prayer time, for my future son-in-law just to wrap his arms around me and pray for me this morning. Because he's a, he's a good guy. Um, okay, I'm nervous. I'll just tell you. Let's just get that out of the way. Um, I've been a lot more comfortable through the years hiding behind a song. And I guess not really hiding in a sense, but I was a pretty shy kid. And I would listen to music. My parents got me a little record player, a little 45 record player, and I would listen in my bedroom when I was... Does everyone know what records are? Okay, good. I'm just checking. <laughs> They're big CDs for some of you younger kids. <laughs> and I would listen by hours and hours to so many different singers. And, and I, I loved their songs, but I loved the lyrics because I thought, oh, I wish I was brave enough to say that. So I would learn a song because I wanted somebody to know how I felt. And words have been difficult for me at times, and I'm learning to step into the words. But I do feel that God is doing a new thing. And the scripture that I have read for years is, is really coming to life in new and fresh ways for me. And I'm so very grateful for that. So I am nervous, but here's one blessing that comes with being able to go to primetime on Wednesday night because I am over 
that age. But in the 58 years, I have seen God more faithful than I have seen him not faithful. And so I know that his faithfulness in the past gives me assurance for his faithfulness today. Even though I may not be able to see where he's going, I have the assurance of his faithfulness in the past. And so I can step out in faith and trust that he will be faithful. So let's dive into the story of Noah. I love this story. I really do. But here's what I think I love about it more than anything else. I love that it is really about seeing God at work in the midst and in the aftermath of the storm. I'm not really going to try to, I'm not going to tell you that I'm making a parallel with Noah's story and our family's story. Um, that really is not my intention of this. So let me just say that up front. And yet I do think that there is some truth that is found in Noah's story and some promises found in Noah's story that I have begun to claim for my life. The truth be told, I wouldn't even made the cut for the boat. I would have missed it altogether. But I am finding some promises of God in the midst of both my storms and in Noah's storms. 25 years ago, I went through a very public divorce. Just gonna let that sit there for a minute. That's especially hard to say with three of my kids sitting on the front row. And I remember one Sunday morning in the midst of the storm, and I made choices in the midst of it that made the storm much more furious. But I remember sitting in our home church one Sunday morning and I just kind of wanted to hide and I found a spot in the very back row of the balcony that morning. And I just wept throughout the service. At the end of the service, our pastor kind of stepped into the well of the sanctuary and he looked around and he said, if you're visiting with us here this morning, we're so glad you're here. And all of a sudden I'm thinking he's gonna have the visitors stand. I don't want to stand today. I don't want to tell anybody my name. I just want to sit here and cry. But he said, if you're visiting and you want to tell someone your name, there are people all around you that want to hear it. But maybe you're here this morning and all you want to do is sit on the back row of the balcony and cry. <laughs> he had no idea. We talked about this later. He had no idea I was there that morning. God knew I was there. And here's what my pastor said. We want you to know that God has not forgotten you. Amen. That he sees you. That we serve a God of second chances. And we serve a God of new beginnings. And we serve a God who sets his children free. And that day began for me a journey. I submitted myself under the authority and the leadership of our church. They helped me establish an accountability group and I began a journey, of the biblical restoration process. Of, first of just recognition. I had to just go, yeah, okay, there's sin in my life. And then repentance, restitution, reconnecting, and then restoration closure. And I wish I had time to unpack all of that, but I don't. But I think those are very important steps. The journey continues to this day although not quite as intense as it was 25 years ago. But the bottom line is sin has consequences. Amen. Forgiveness, absolutely, but also consequences. And just because there are continued consequences, that doesn't mean that God has not fully given his forgiveness. And so I choose every day to walk in the light of his grace and his forgiveness. But consequences are another thing. And, you know, as my children have gotten older and they have asked more questions, I've, I've shared with them more and more. A few years ago, I felt that the Lord saying to me, as my husband Don and I have been married now for 20 years, I felt the Lord saying to me, celebrate your marriage and honor your husband. Well, I felt like I did that privately, but I didn't really do that publicly for the biggest reason is I never wanted my kids to think I forgot what it had cost them. 
And so the second thing that I felt God say to me was, go to each of my children, find a time. I knew God would make that time known. And one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, say just that to them. That I feel God was calling me to step into celebrating my marriage and honoring my husband. But I said to each of them, don't ever think for one minute that I have forgotten what it has cost you. We are a family that in a sense we had to grieve the ideal of the we had to grieve the loss of the ideal, the ideal of the forever intact family. When God called Noah to build an ark and put his family and the animals on the ark, he was preparing Noah for the loss of the ideal because you see, paradise would never be again. The garden would never be as God intended it to be. And when the storm and the flood was over, Noah and his family found themselves in a new place. We aren't really sure how far they traveled in the storm, but I can pretty much guarantee that where they started was different than where they ended up. So when they stepped out of the ark, they stepped into their new normal. A normal that God, however, was still actively a part of. My husband, Don, and I, we've been married now for 20 years. And when we got married, I had four kids. He had three kids. And then six months later, we adopted a baby boy. They were all 11 years old and under. And we survived. Let me be your happy thought, you young moms. <laughs> Let me be your happy thought. You can do it. You will get through it. We found ourselves over the last 20 years at different times into a new normal. And certainly now that we are embracing the empty nest season, we once again are finding ourselves in a new normal. Our family will never be that family that has remained intact and loving. Okay, well, the loving part, we totally get. But the intact, never divorced, always together family, we've had to grieve the loss of the ideal. And now with Scott and Jen, as you begin to prepare for your building of your family together, Jen, I know that you've got some baggage and you'll need to unpack that a little bit of the loss of the ideal of your family of origin. And yet, here we find ourselves in a new place, in a new beginning, in a new normal just as Noah and his family did. I love at the beginning of their journey, it says God shut them in. And it wasn't until the end of the journey that they got out, they didn't get out until God said, it's time, get out of the ark. Now here's my takeaway from that. If God has closed a door, don't go busting it down to open it until he says go. There's a reason he closes the door. They couldn't weather the storm or wait out the storm if they'd had the door open. So when God closes a door, trust him enough to leave it closed until he says, get out and then go. There's a lot of waiting involved. Sometimes the best thing to do is just wait out the storm. And a lot of just living out the daily. Noah's flood lasted about 40 days, but you realize they were actually in the ark a lot longer than that. Maybe about 12 and a half uh, months. That's a long time after the storm stopped. I can just hear Noah's wife saying, okay, you said 40 days, what's the deal? <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> okay, maybe that's just what I would say. I'm not sure, but, but after the flood, they waited. Noah sent out a raven, they waited. He sent out a dove and they waited and then they still waited. They had to wait out the storm. A little sidebar, sweet verse, at the height of the storm, at the most intense, there's just a little sweet verse at the beginning of Genesis eight. It just says, God remembered Noah. I love that. It reminds me of sitting on the back row of the balcony. 
in the height of the storm. And God's saying by the words of my pastor, I remember you. Be encouraged. And God said, it's time. So they got out of the ark. And the first thing they did was thank and praise God. That's a good lesson. That is a good lesson. When we have, we, we, we remember to pray when we know something's coming and during the midst of the storm. But after we just kind of go, whoo, and move on. But thank and praise God for the storm because he has brought you to a new place and he has not stopped being in the midst of your journey. Noah built an altar. It was a burnt offering of praise and thanks to God. But I also think it was a, an a altar of remembrance so that they would remember and be able to tell their story, their testament, their testimony to generations to come of God's faithfulness in that moment. Once they built the altar, then God blessed Noah and his family. Then God established a covenant, which, Noah prom which God promised there would never be a storm like that again. He established the covenant between himself and every living thing upon the earth. So let's think about that. Every living thing upon the earth. I'm a living thing. You're a living thing. He established his covenant with me. He established a covenant with you that there would never be a storm like that again. The same elements that caused the storm are the same elements through which the promise was revealed. The rainbow was made out of the same elements that caused the flood and the reason that they were in the ark for 12 and a half months. God redeems. He redeems those same ingredients that produce destruction, finality, fury, complete annihilation. Out of those same elements came the promise. Hallelujah. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Whatever you may be going through, God has a way of making all things new. And he begins by making us new. Be encouraged. God's promise was revealed after the perseverance through the problem. The storm cannot be stopped, but it can be survived. It begins with trust and faith in God that he has you right where he needs you to be. Which is why Paul can say in Romans 5, rejoice in your suffering. Are you kidding me? But he doesn't stop there. He says, here's what I mean by that. Because suffering produces perseverance. Like literally, you just put one foot in front of the other until you can maybe take four or five. Perseverance. Perseverance produces character. It grows something in you that is eternal. And that character produces hope. So what he's really saying is rejoice in hope, but here's how you get there often. One thing about being 58 is I get that so much more than I got it when I was 28 because I've seen God faithful time and time and time again. Rainbows have always had a pertinent place in our family story. As Don and I began to blend this family now 20 years ago, we would talk about adding another one. When we got married, I had four, he had three. And then we'd, every once in a while, we'd talk about adding another life to this bunch. And then the kids would be horrible. And we'd just slap each other back to reality and say, what are you kidding? <laughs> well, my husband was adopted. And so we'd talk about the idea of adoption. And how special that might be. And then, honestly, the kids, you know, was, you know, we had seven kids, 11 and under. I don't need to explain that at all. It was a handful. And then, you know, we'd, I'd put it on the back burner. And then we'd talk about it. And we'd say, well, you know, if we adopted, it'd be so special if we could adopt a boy. Because my husband, who was adopted, was a boy, of course. And, and um, we would name him Sam. Because that was my husband's father's name. And then, you know, it would just be kind of chaos. And finally, literally, I just flippantly said to God one day, 
Okay, God, if you want something to happen, you are just going to have to drop a baby in our lap. I just can't think about it anymore. Can I just tell you something? Be really careful what you flippantly say to God. He has the best sense of humor of us all. We got married in August, and that following February, I got a call from a friend of mine who's an OB doctor. And she called and she said, Sandy, we've had this baby that was born. The people that were going to adopt him, it fell through at the last minute. If the baby's not placed in a home in 24 hours, he's going to have to go into foster care. You don't know of anybody, do you, looking to adopt? <laughs> and I'm thinking, could this be God dropping a baby in our lap? So we called all the kids to our bedroom. We had a big family meeting and... They just immediately said, well, you know, the crib could go here and we could do this and we could help you with this. And they were just all in. And so as we prayed and talked about it, we thought, well, if let's give it 24 hours. If another family comes forward, then maybe that's our fleece or Jonathan. He said, mom, we just need to pray for one of those blankets. <laughs> and so we did. So that was on a Saturday. On Sunday, I woke up and I said to Don, I have to go see this baby. I didn't even know if that was possible. But our friend, our doctor friend, and her husband was the attorney kind of handling the adoption, made arrangements for Don and I to go to the hospital. And so we went to the hospital, waited in the little waiting room. And my friend, Sherry, she went to get the baby and she wheeled in this little acrylic bassinet. Before she went to get him, as we stood there, the four of us, she, she said, Sandy, we've got to pray. And literally, this is how she started her prayer. Listen up, God. <laughs> we need a smack you in the face, burning bush sign here today. <laughs> Don't be subtle, okay? So she went to get him and wheeled him in this little acrylic bassinet, four pounds, 11 ounce life inside of it. And up above his head, there was the cutest little heart shape cut out. And there were rainbows, rainbow colors all around it. And there were letters in there. And I just kind of remember thinking, well, that can't be his name because they don't name children in the hospital that are going to be placed for adoption. But do you know they had already named him literally from the moment he was born? Sam. We started crying. Look, honey, his name is Sam. I can look. And the nurse kind of thought we were upset. And she goes, you don't have to keep that name. He said, no, it's kind of important here. We brought Samuel Patrick Pestless home with us the next day. He has a Hebrew, Irish, Greek name. He's African-American, Native American, Caucasian, and sometimes sings in Spanish. <laughs> and he is such a rainbow. <laughs> and I really, I just, I argued with God because I saw the rainbow and I saw this life and I thought, God, have you missed the last three years? We've made a mess of things. And the rainbow, what came to me was, there will never be a storm like this again. Ah. And God was giving us a chance, not just at new life in a figurative sense, but of new life, very literally. In the life of this baby who is now 18, and I know his brothers and sisters cannot believe he has gone to college. Isn't it something? God redeems, God reclaims us, and he establishes his covenant with us. The rainbow, just an everyday kind of element. Nothing really supernatural about that, except that God uses the everyday element and explains a supernatural promise. Or a baby's cry. Our oldest daughter just had a new baby. And what, what a miracle. And God uses everyday birth to show us in a very literal sense what new life and being born again looks like. The bread and the cup that's 
on every table at breakfast in one form or another. Nothing really supernatural about the bread or the cup except that our Lord and Savior transformed it into something supernatural for us to understand his love, his faithfulness, and what he would be willing to go through because of his love for us. Matthew 26 says, And now as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, for this, this sign, this element is my body. And then he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. All of you, don't miss that. All of you. For this is, for this is my blood. This is my blood of the new covenant. I love that. The new covenant, the new testament, which is poured out, poured out for many for the forgiveness, for the forgiveness of sin. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow, there's no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, <laughs> they fail not, as thou hast been, thou forever will be, listen to the words of this second verse, pardon for sin, oh, I love this, and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide and strength. Please remain standing. We're coming to the time of the service where we see just how Sandy has told us how God takes everyday elements and explains something supernatural to us and does something supernatural in us. So we are getting ready to take bread 
that was made by someone, made by someone's human hands, and we're getting ready to take juice that was made by someone's human hands. We even have them on a cup and a plate that were made by someone in this congregation. And we take these things that human hands have made and we pray over them that the Lord would do something supernatural in us because the Lord said, take and eat. Take and eat. This will be my body. This will be my cup. And as we do this, this communion service today, we are reminded that there are other people than just those of us in this room who partake of this with us. We are told there is a great communion of saints. There are all of us who have lost loved ones. There are all of us who have family members and friends that are separated around the world. We even have brothers and sisters in Christ this morning that are being persecuted all across the world for their faith, that are in places of famine, that are in places of great distress. And the Lord said, when you come and you take my meal together, you're doing this with the great cloud of witnesses, the communion of saints. So we gather in a space and a time that is bigger than us. We come out of our time, our generation, our culture, our race, and we join with the great family of God for the meal. Will you pray with Pastor Colleen? As we come to the Lord we, and prepare our hearts for this moment, we come to him and we ask him to forgive us of those things that we've done. And we'll, will you pray with me this prayer? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. His word says that if, we're, if we confess our sins that he is faithful and he is just to forgive us our sins. So may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And in this celebration of this, of this forgiveness, will you recite with us the common creed? We'll recite it together. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As the communion servers come forward, you may be seated as a congregation. Let's sing this hymn together as we're served and pay special attention to these lyrics that tell the story, tell the reason why we're doing this. Behold the Lamb. Behold the Lamb who bears our sins away. For us, and we remember the promise made that all who come in faith find forgiveness at the cross. So we share. So we share in this bread of 
stand with us. Taking the bread. I have received from the Lord Jesus Christ that which I have delivered unto you, that on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And he said, drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, together, we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. Lift up your countenance and give you his peace now and through the ages of ages. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.